Welcome back to Comic Storian's Complete Story Series. This is the series in which we recap your favorite comic books and add in some interesting elements, such as music, weird voices, and sometimes sound effects, allowing you to have an epic recap. It's kind of what we do around here. If you enjoy this, make sure you stick around. But right now, we're doing Batman Black Mirror. Now, if you were unaware of what Batman Black Mirror is, it was Scott Snyder's first storyline, and it was during the period in which Dick Grayson was actually acting as Batman because Bruce Wayne had supposedly died, and then they discovered that he was still alive, but he thought that Dick Grayson was doing a great great job, so he let him stay as Batman in Gotham City. So, Dick Grayson's now been working with Jim Gordon and the rest of the Bat family, while Bruce Wayne went on to start Batman Incorporated and bring his show on the road. In our last video, Jim Gordon dealt with the hardships of seeing his son again. He watched his son James grow up into a psychopath who he knew was tied to several murders, but he could never fully prove it. And now, James has come by to tell his father that he is okay now, he's gotten better, and with him being in town, they have nothing to worry about. It was early in the morning when the call went out that there had been an incident at the Gotham Global Modern Bank. It was the strangest crime scene ever reported. A giant dead killer whale in the middle of the bank's lobby floor. Later at the crime lab built by Wayne Industries, Jim explains to Dick that there are currently no leads, no photos, no video. While running tests, Dick tells him that it seems like the whale came from the Siberian Sea. And it's about 43 feet long and it weighs about 4.2 tons, which is abnormally large for a female orca. The issue is that there is no record of this whale's captivity, but judging by the collapsed dorsal fin, it shows signs that it was being kept in a cage. Jim mentions that not only did someone dump the whale in a bank, they were illegally keeping her and feeding her growth hormones. Dick begins to cut into the whale and he says that they need to find out who would really want the most egg on their face from a stunt like this. Jim says, her face. Sonia Branch, head of the bank, though she changed it. It used to be Zucka, Sonia Zucka. Dick thinks about it, and Jim goes on saying, as in Anthony Fats Zucka, the man who killed your parents. Dick stops saying, well, at least we know where to start digging. Jim stops him, telling him, that's the thing. Sonya's clean. Sonya's mother raised her alone with no contact from Tony. She worked her way through school with high honors, and then at 24, she founded the GGM. As Jim goes on, his words begin to trail off, and Dick says, it sounds almost as if he's distracted. For a moment, Jim remains quiet, and then he says that it's his son, James. He's back in town. He's claiming to be a different person claiming to be on some kind of new medication, and he's actually hoping that he can meet him. It's just right now he doesn't think that he can see clearly on this one, which is why he needs help. Just if he does, be honest about how you feel, Batman. While Jim continues, the orca's stomach finally gives out and it begins to rip, and a body falls out. And as the night begins to set in, Dick suits up and heads over to visit the woman of this attack, Sonya Branch. Turns out the woman in the whale's stomach was Evelyn Marr, Sonya's personal assistant. And after Dick lands on her balcony, she hears a thump, and she walks out to see Batman standing there. As she slides the door open, she asks why is he here, and Dick tells her, I have some questions involving Evelyn's murder. Tears begin to stream down her face, and she tells him no. She already told the police. She doesn't know anything, so just leave her alone. Dick tries to tell her to talk to him, but she slams the door and locks it. He waits for a moment, and then he leaves. And after making sure that he is gone, Sonya grabs a phone. She tells the person on the other line that she's had enough. She'll do whatever it takes, just don't hurt anyone. And as Dick leaves, he traces the call, and it leads to a man. Bixby Rhodes. Bixby runs an extremely high-end car dealership in Gotham, and word on the street is that he's become one of the city's most premier gun smugglers. He would hide clients' weapons in the cars, kind of like a prize at the bottom of a cereal box. The question is, why would Sonya be involved with him? Just as Dick lands in the dealership's parking lot, he begins to hear the sound of automatic rifles firing. He quickly jumps down onto the lower level of the garage, avoiding the gunfire, and then he hears a rumble. The hatch above him begins to close, trapping Dick below. And up above, Bixby tells his guard that it seems that they've overordered this month. They should clean that up. The guard pushes a button, and then down inside of the garage, the crushing machine starts. Cars slowly begin to shift and be pushed towards the center, leaving Dick right in the middle of it all. As the cars begin to close in around him, Dick tries to figure out a plan of action, and he looks up at the door leading out. Knowing that it's the weakest point, he hotwires the car, stabbing a knife into the gas pedal to hold it in place. The car starts to take off, and Dick throws a small explosive onto the door to weaken it. Outside, as the guards make their way to the door, the explosion goes off, launching Dick out into the parking lot. Bixby calls out to the guards for a report but before he can answer, Dick jumps out from the shadows. Bixby makes his way out asking what's going on and Dick tells him that this is the part where he runs. 
He tells Dick, all right, he could do that, and he pulls up his pants leg, showing a mechanical leg. Bixby then jumps from car to car, heading towards the wall of the parking lot. Dick starts to run after him, but then he says, forget this, and he fires a grappling hook. The anchor shoots through the air, twisting around Bixby's legs, and he falls to the ground. So Dick walks over. As Bixby looks back, he sees Dick's silhouette in the moon, and he asks, why are you after Sonya Branch? Bixby looks back and smiles and says that he's really got nothing to say. Suddenly, there's a loud crunching sound as Dick steps on the mechanical legs. Dick looks at him and tells him, my bad. You were saying? Bixby starts shouting that he just stepped on his, and then Dick steps on the other leg. As Dick drags him back, Bixby continues shouting that he's got nothing on him. He'll be back! And later, as Dick goes to meet with Jim, he tells him that Bixby was right. They got nothing on him. The rain begins to pour, and Jim says technically, Batman was trespassing on the property. But as they go on, Dick says that they need to talk to Sonya again. There's something that she's not telling them. She could just be a rotten apple, just like... But then a voice tells him that he's right. And Sonya steps out, stating that she was hiding something, but not anymore. Jim leans in, whispering, She wanted to talk to you alone. I can say no. And Dick tells him it's fine. As Jim walks off, Sonya explains that she needs to apologize. She didn't tell him anything because she was scared. Dick asks of who, and Sonya tells him of Batman. Dick tries to tell her that she has nothing to worry about unless she's... She finishes saying, what, a criminal like her father? The truth is that she's ashamed of her father, who she hardly even knew, and she spent her life trying to make a name for herself. However, no one can see that. All they can see is that she is one of the daughters of the murdering thug, Tony Zuko. Sonya goes on saying that since she started her bank, she's gotten some account requests from some of Gotham's nastier elements, wanting to clean their money. She would always turn them down, and they would all just tip their hats and walk away. But these new guys, they don't take no for an answer. The two worst are Bixby Rhodes and the some smuggler calling himself Tiger Shark. She never met the man, but he's always sent a person asking. And like always, she's turned him down. And then suddenly, Evelyn went missing. Finally, Sonya mentions that she doesn't know where he is. But she does know that he lives on a boat outside the jurisdiction of the Coast Guard. Sonya then says that she's sorry that she didn't tell him sooner. And Dick tells her, no, I'm the one who's sorry. And I'll make it up to you. After running more tests on the contents of the whale's stomach, Dick found some rust contents, which could be the area of an old gas pipeline. Following the pipeline down, Dick notices a hatch that's been modified to allow access. However, a giant ship slowly creeps up behind him. A short while later, Dick watches as the waters begin to darken and a whale jumps up trying to bite him. He swings to avoid the bite, but all the while, the man known as Tiger Shark is watching. A man speaking for Tiger Shark says that Tiger Shark will ask one last time. Why are you in these waters? Dick tells him, practicing my backstroke. And Tiger Shark laughs. But as the man tries to explain their methods of torture, Tiger Shark pushes the man into the waters, allowing the whale to eat him. Tiger Shark then walks over to Batman, sticking out his tongue, showing hieroglyphics in a forked tongue, and he shouts for him to gaze upon a king. Dick swings back and then forward, cracking Tiger Shark with a headbutt, saying that he's just a king who murders people to bully and intimidate them. Tiger Shark smiles, and then he swipes his cane, cutting the string, holding Dick up. Dick falls into the water, and the whale swims up, biting at him. Dick gets caught in the whale's mouth, and then he turns on hypersonic sounds. The whale swims up out of the water, biting at the guards, and Dick quickly punches the other guard, and then begins to chase after Tiger Shark, but he's already gone. Over the intercoms, Tiger Shark calls out that Batman is such a rare creature. Sadly, if only he had more time to use his skin to line his boots. Dick then looks out the window and sees a small pot escape, and in that pot he sees Tiger Shark holding something. After he presses a button, the entire yacht begins to explode and the water rushes in. A short while later on the water's surface, Bowie begins to shake, and Dick pulls himself up, gasping for air. Over the radio, Tim shouts that he got his signal, and Dick tells him, Ahoy there! Tim asks if he's alright, and Dick tells him to hurry up and send someone to get me. I've got an appointment. He gets picked up, and after changing, he heads out into the city to meet with James at Jim's request. Dick tells him that it's crazy the way your mental image of someone doesn't age. James says that's the helmet greeble phenomenon, and thank you for the meeting today. Dick shakes his hand, telling him, of course. I've heard from Leslie that you've been a big help at the clinic, so I wanted to say thanks in person. But James says that it's okay. He knows that he's here on behalf of his father. And honestly, if it wasn't for him being skeptical or suspicious of him, he would have questions about his father's police skills. Silence overcomes the two of them, and then James tells him, that was a joke. It's been, what, 12 years since we last saw each other in the park? Dick shouts, that's right! The picnic with Barbara and the other boy. And James tells him, Ben Wolf." James then says he actually ran into Ben the other day. He was a real jerk back then, but now he's a pharmaceutical representative. He lives on the east side. It's funny how some people take a while to grow up. And Dick tells him, yeah, while other people never changed. 
Dick's words trail off and he tells James that he's really sorry that he has to go right now. James asks if he's sure and Dick tells him he is, but he's really sorry. There's something that he overlooked. He suits back up and he heads over to Sonia's penthouse and as she swims out of her pool, Dick asks, it was you, wasn't it? She stares in shock to see Batman again. And Dick goes on saying, You're the one who killed the video footage on Tiger's men placing the whale in the lobby. You blacked it out so that I would deliberately go after Bixby, even though he had nothing to do with Evelyn's death. Sonia gets out of the pool saying, I hardly know how to respond. Supposing, just supposing I did. We were both criminals. What would it have mattered? Dick tells her that she would be obstructing the law. And Sonia laughs, asking him, What about you? Trespassing on my property, wearing a mask and a cape? And you want to talk about law? Dick stares at her, telling her, You've tampered with evidence, and that could be the reason for Tiger Shark's escape. She responds, telling him, Or it could be just because you failed to catch him. She walks off, saying, We're just going to have to agree to disagree. Good night, Batman. Dick says, Good night, Miss Zuko. And Sonia snaps back, It's Miss Branch. Dick fires his grappling gun, and he tells her, That's what I said. The next morning, James heads over to Ben's house and begins to check his mail. And then he walks inside of Ben's house and he makes his way down towards the basement. As he gets to the bottom, a disfigured body hangs suspended. And James tells Ben that he just ran into Dick Grayson. And guess who they were talking about? You! And through his missing jaw, Ben begs him to stop. And James pulls out a saw and says, Now where were we? Now we're going to be concluding Black Mirror very soon, and you guys have voted on Twitter. The next story we're going to be doing is Bart Allen the Flash and the Death of a Flash. So hope you guys are excited about that. Don't forget to subscribe to see the ending of Black Mirror and see what's going to be happening with Bart Allen. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram where you can find votes that allow you to know what's coming up on this channel. I'll see you next time right here.